not very many cars on this road. I'm going up a little bit further here where I think there's a better place for people to see me and to pull over. Try that for a little bit. Morning. So I'm hiking at starting at 7.20, which is a little earlier than yesterday, so that's good. There is a closed section on this part of the trail. I talked to a, um, a hiker this morning and she said that this is the last closed section of the PCT for the rest of the way, that all the other sections are open all the way to Canada. Um, I'm not sure if that will stay stay that way or if you know she was mistaken but hopefully that's true this section is closed due to an endangered species of frog which I'm like why do you need to close the Pacific Crest Trail for a frog it's not like I'm gonna catch it well I would I would catch it but I would let it go actually if it was endangered and I knew I wouldn't but anyways so there is a small hitchhiking section here um, where I skip somewhere between 4 and 15 miles of the PCT depending on uh, how far I get a hitch to so yeah I'll maybe get to uh, Agua Dulce Dolce, Agua Dolce, uh, earlier. So yeah, six miles to the close, hitchhike from there. Uh, I believe I'm not in any water shortages here as well. So carrying a little less than three liters. Let's get hiking. So I can technically hitchhike from here, <clears throat> but I can still actually hike four more miles on the trail before the actual closure. And the closure is right at this same road, a couple miles down. Um, so I think I'm gonna, I should keep hiking, even though I have to go up a thousand feet up that mountain right there. Um, there are no cars here anyways, and it's still early, 8 a.m., so. I'm going to keep hiking for four more miles up the giant mountain and then once I get to the part that it's actually closed, I'll hitchhike. <sighs> Just pounded out that last section. Um, I thought I was going up really high. Um, I only went up like 500 feet and I realized that this mountain's a little bigger than I thought it was. They still have 800 more feet and another 1.1 miles so i'm sweating all over uh, the angeles forest definitely has some higher uphills the grade honestly isn't terrible but going up consistently is kind of like walking upstairs it's probably not as steep as stairs it's probably something in between flat ground and stairs either way it's hard and I'm sweaty, but it's not that big, so I'll get over it. Mm, sweat. Second breakfast. I pointed to the wrong mountain. I don't think I saw that mountain from down at that freeway, but looks like we're going to the top of that one. So hopefully there's not a larger one behind that one that I can't see.
that was like 1300 feet uphill in 1.5 miles 1.7 miles something like that Whew, that was a that was rough um, some beautiful views up there though check those out um, got up there right as three other hikers got up and uh, now I get to go back down and I probably should stop vlogging because I should be using my trekking poles because my knee is a bum got a bum knee um, as you can see happiness is on this face though because I made it up the mountain and, and now it's downhill to the highway where I'll hitch for about 11 miles to mile like 401 so yay I'm becoming a little too obsessed I think with uh, elevation I'm I mean every day I look forward ahead on the map you know when I get to water I need to know where the next water is and I knew I do need to know the terrain kind of depending on how much water I'll need if there's lots of uphills I'll need probably more if it's lots of downhills, I won't have to drink as much. If it's down on the desert floor, I might have to drink more. So I do look ahead and I do kind of have vague goals of what I want to hit for the day. However, I've really gotten into looking at the elevation and seeing when the downhills are and I get really excited about those. And then I see the uphills and I get a little bit downhearted when I see the uphills. And I just, I need to be more okay with that. Or I should be more okay with that. I want to be more okay with that. I want to not, to, I don't want to worry quite as much about the uphills. Even though they're hard, like, I don't know, that's the Pacific Crest Trail. It's uphills. And once I get into the Sierras, there are some massive, massive up and down hills in snow, you know, above 10,000 feet where it's challenge more challenging to breathe. So I need to, uh, I need to work on that. The other thing I've learned about myself is I really don't like the cold. And I kind of always thought I've been okay with the cold. I lived in Russia for a couple years, you know, I, I generally like the thermostat in the house down at 70 degrees all the time. However, being out here, for some reason, at the end of hiking 20 miles in the sun all day, when the sun sets and it gets chilly, you know, it gets in the 50s or 60s, sometimes a lot colder than that. It's been down to the 20s before, which if it's down in the 20s, that's understandably cold. But I get really cold really easily and it's not, my favorite thing ever um, so that'll be interesting for the Sierra section because uh, it's gonna be cold it's gonna be cold Time to try and get a hitch, or else I'll just be road walking for a while. Not very many cars on this road. I'm going up a little bit further here where I think there's a better place for people to see me and to pull over. Try that for a little bit. I haven't had a car pass me in like 10 minutes. I don't know how well hitchhiking is going to work on this random highway that I guess is not very popular. <laughs> My other option is to road walk and as cars pass me, hold out my thumb. It can t potentially be less likely for them to pick me up if there's no place to pull over to pick me up. 
I mean, there's not a lot of cars on the road, so that's a good thing. Um, but I think I'm gonna have to do that. I think I have to road walk with my thumb out as cars pass. Back on the trail. Five I had a hike on the uh, road for about five miles, which kind of sucked. Roads are hard on the feet, and so glad to be back on the trail. Lunchtime. That means I'm gonna take off my shoes, take off my knee brace, eat some food, relax, enjoy the shade. This protects me from annoying bugs and little mosquitoes and flies. But more importantly, boom, 400 miles, 400 miles hiking. It's crazy. This is the third water that I have seen and I'm passing and I have no water with me because I drank a bunch of it and all this next section is downhill so it's easy and I don't want to carry the weight because Supposedly, there's a piped spring in like 0.3 miles. Um, but then that's the danger is if that doesn't actually exist, then it sucks for me. So that's kind of the challenge of getting water if you're um, trying to bank on certain spots that have water. Supposedly, this one is fairly reliable, which is why I'm banking on it but it's always a little weird to pass up water when you don't have any and be like, no, thank you. One of the things that I really hate about uh, cooking on the Pacific Crest Trail is the cleaning part of the cooking. Not because I don't like cleaning per se, but because it's challenging to clean something when your water is precious and I'm not carrying around cleaning soap with me really um, other than some hand sanitizer. And so, for example, last night, I don't know if you can see that, last night, I had um, some noodles and that was the best I could clean it at 8 p.m. in the dark while it was freezing and I had a little bit of water to spare um, but I was just so cold and I cleaned it out the best I could and just figured well I'll clean it when I get to the next water source. set up. Time to uh, chillax. I made it to camp. I'm just chilling now. 
too lazy to do anything else. Feels nice not to move. Welcome to uh, bath time. Time to clean these dirty little feet. Yep. That's gross. There's bugs everywhere. There's moss. My feet are all up in the mossy sand. painful but uh survived the ripping of the bandages off and I'm clean and my feet feel a little better